Oh, it's way easier than you might suspect to make the very best mac and cheese. Hello, today I'm gonna make one of my favorites. This is such a fun recipe to make, and it is so simple. This is mac and cheese. Macaroni and cheese gotta be one of the most universally loved foods of all. And um, <laughs> especially in the United States, I don't know of anybody that isn't interested in having some of the macaroni and cheese. I haven't met that person yet. I'm sure they exist, but it's just a rare thing. Mac and cheese, delicious, rich, creamy, cheesy, plenty of pasta there. And when it's made just right, you get this most incredible experience. The pasta's firm. You get a good mouth feel from that. You can get a good mouth, uh, a good mouth feel from the sauce because it coats your tongue and the roof of your mouth just right. And the flavors just explode. So it's using the right cheese to give you the flavor. It's using the right cook on the pasta and the right technique to get the best overall blending. So we're gonna get into this in just a second here. I want to mention to you, please, take a look in the description box when you get a chance. That's where I have my links to things like my website where I sell my recipes, or I sell caps, aprons, shirts, and things like that for Texas cooking today. And those links are right down there. Also, if you're interested in my Patreon or my Wissio, please take a look at those. They're really cool platforms and I've got them all set up just for you. Folks, come over here. Let's look at the very simple ingredients I have here and then we'll have a short discussion on two different ways of making this and then I'm gonna proceed with the way I normally like to do it for myself. And I'll explain the other way and why I think it's better for other applications. So come on over and take a look, this is good. So my ingredients are very simple. This particular recipe I like to use, of course, macaroni, your choice on that one. Some cheddar cheese. And for this, I don't use any cheddar cheese. I use an extra sharp cheddar cheese. And there's a very specific reason. Over here, I have some heavy cream. Now, I didn't choose milk or light cream, which would be half and half. I chose the heavy whipping cream for its richness, its flavor, and again, mouthfeel. It's all about quality on this. You're gonna need just a little bit of salt, and I'm gonna say this, it's up to you. You see here I have this combination of salt and MSG. I have that, and I also have just MSG. I have that because I want to impress upon folks that A, MSG is not bad. It isn't bad for you. It's actually already in your um, spinal fluid. It exists there so that your spinal fluid can carry electric signals to the brain. Otherwise, it wouldn't work right and you'd probably not be able to walk. So in a, anyway, MSG, very important stuff. But like anything, if you use too much of it, it's going to make you feel bad. It's bad for you. Too much of this is bad for you. Too much of this is bad for you. But in moderation, folks, they're good. Now let's get on with what I'm going to do here. Before we get in to the make on this, I want to discover the two different uh, methods. Excuse me. I want to discuss the two different methods of making mac and cheese that really make for good quality mac and cheese. Now, whether you bake the mac and cheese or whether you just produce it on the stove and serve it up, both of these techniques apply. All right, so the technique that I recommend for use in commercial settings. For instance, if you're working in a commercial kitchen, <clears throat> you're gonna be producing a lot of it and you're gonna put it on a steam table. It's gonna be sitting there for 30 minutes, maybe an hour, all right? So it's gonna be kept at the right temperature. But in doing that, you need a mac and cheese that's gonna be stable. If it gets too thick to serve, then it's not stable. If the noodles get too soft and they're mushy, then it's not stable. Okay, um, so making fresh mac and cheese for a lot of chefs, even though this is a simple recipe, for a lot of chefs, this is a little bit tricky. Let me tell you what I've learned. The, the thing I have learned when it comes to the noodle, first of all, we're gonna start with it. 
When you're going to make a mac and cheese that is stable for a steam table, I need to cook my noodle exactly perfect. It needs to be cooked at the exact measurement of al dente that I want the mac to be at when people consume it. In other words, I want the, the texture of my pasta exactly where it should be when it is being eaten. So I cook it just to that level and not beyond. And the real trick here, once I've finished cooking it and I've drained it of its water, I'll put it back in its pan and I will add some cooking oil. Not a little bit, I'll add plenty. Um, a lot of times I'll use olive oil for this. And that's a good thing because it just adds a little extra depth of flavor to the whole dish. There's nothing that'll be perceived, but it will make for a richer mac and cheese. What'll happen is that oil will get soaked into the pasta, okay? It'll soak into the outer part of it. It'll, it'll get on the inside of the pasta and it'll soak in there. And you might be thinking, well, that'll prevent the pasta from holding the sauce. Well, had I washed the starch from the outside of the pasta, if I rinsed the pasta, you might be right, but I don't do that. I just pour off the water and put the pasta back in there. So there's this coat of soluble starch on the outside of it that will still hold sauce even though it has been covered in oil. Okay, keep that in mind. This works, all right? So <clears throat> I'll treat my mac. Now in another pan, I make a white sauce, all right? There's different terms for this, but let's keep it simple. It's a white sauce. You start with a roux, a, 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 a base, which is fat and flour. You add to that milk or cream, and then boom, that right there is a white sauce. In the United States, some folks call that cream gravy, all right? That's where we begin, people. You get that and you get it just perfect, nice and smooth and satiny and silky, okay? And then once you have your white sauce made, you take your grated cheese, you sprinkle that in, melt it into that white sauce. So there is your thickened sauce right there. You have your stable macaroni that won't absorb the moisture from the sauce because you've added a layer of moisture blocking oil. You've stabilized your macaroni product with that oil. So your sauce doesn't thicken on you. The mac doesn't change and get soft on you on the uh, steam table. And once it's all said and done, you end up with macaroni and cheese that comes out as wonderful with the first serving as it does with the last. So try that method if you're making big batch. Now here today, we're not making big batch, we're making little batch. This is the way we do it for little batch. We keep it simple. We boil our mac, we make a cheese sauce. We put the mac and cheese into the cheese sauce. It was just way too thin because I'm not gonna use a, a white sauce. We're gonna make a very thin sauce with just these two items. And that then becomes this wonderful thin sauce that the macaroni that I undercook will start absorbing liquid from. After 10 minutes, it's ready to serve. All right, and it'll stay good for easily 25, 30 minutes without thickening too much, okay? So that's how we do it. MSG, I've already mentioned it's in you, okay? If you don't wanna use it, you don't have to. But there's a lot of products that use MSG. MSG is, oh, I remember an argument I had with a lady. She was eating her Cheetos and expressing to me how if she had any MSG in her body at all, she would die of a heart attack immediately. It would be instant. And that there was no compromise to this. I said, ma'am, you have MSG in your spinal fluid. She said, that's not true and I don't believe that. And uh, I said, okay, believe whatever you want. That's where glutamic acid was first discovered. Okay, but anyway, She's sitting there eating her Cheetos and, and expressing how it is so deadly for her to eat MSG. And I said, you know there's MSG in those Cheetos. And she said, no, there's not. And she looks at the label and she reads the ingredients. She said, I just read the ingredients. There's no MSG on there. So I looked at it with her and I pointed out the words monosodium glutamate. And she said, that's not MSG. I said, yes, M MSG is monosodium glutamate. You did not know that? She said, well, no. And I said, well, I don't see you having a heart attack. And she said, well, there must not be very much in it. Folks, you're not gonna have a heart attack. What it does is it opens the palate. It opens receptors on your palate. If you taste MSG by itself, there's no flavor. It's not salty, it's nothing. It's just flavorless. 
But when you add it to food, you taste more of that food because it opens those receptors in your palate to be capable of doing that. In other words, your cheese products get more cheesy. That's why Cheetos uses it. And Cheetos, along with Kraft mac and cheese and Stouffer's macaroni and cheese, they all have the same thing going. They use a cheese that's really, really super sharp. Let me show you how we make this. We'll do it now. All right, if I want to make mac and cheese, I got to have hot water for the mac. All righty. I have my pan there about halfway full. I'm turning on the wrong burner. I've got my pan here about halfway full with uh, hot water and I am going to bring it up in temperature. Now, to heat this as quick as possible, as efficiently as possible, go ahead and put a lid on your pot. It'll help you. I keep plenty of lids around when I do this because number one, you don't want your sauce to skin over as your mac is cooking. And number two, you don't want that water giving off too much steam and you losing too much of your val valuable heat source to heat it. Okay, so we're gonna hold in as much heat as possible with our lid and get the best out of our boil, all right? That's what we do. Um, right here in this other pot, we start with our heavy cream. There we go. Oh, so simple. Um, and then from here, as I heat this, once it hits about 150 degrees, I start adding in my cheese and I just gently whisk it in. Right here, I need this burner on, but I don't need as much flame as I have on the back burner. I need about a medium temperature to a medium low, and uh, that works well for this. So what I'm looking to do is to bring my cream up in temperature. I want it about 150 degrees. Your chef's thermometer is where, it is, where this is really gonna be handy. Um, because it's a low temperature, it doesn't read that well, okay? Uh, on a lot of other, like fry thermometers and thermometers like that, they don't read well at low temperatures. But chef's thermometers are designed for it. So, works really well. And uh, we're waiting on that to come up in temp. As soon as it hits 150, we start making cheese sauce. All right, I'm gonna just spin my liquid a little there. 146, 47. So we're about there, folks. All right. This is simple enough. Take a handful of the cheese at a time. Sprinkle it in. And I'm going to say this while we're talking about this. The cheese you use. Folks, if, you're, if your favorite cheddar cheese is mild cheddar, that makes for terrible mac and cheese. Mild cheddar... Uh, Longhorn cheddar, Colby, all of those just really are not good choices for mac and cheese. But the sharper cheeses are. And all of your top lines, all of your top companies that um, produce mac and cheese and other cheesy products, they like to use sharp cheddar and extra sharp cheddar because that's where the flavor is, folks. That's what people are looking for once it's all said and done. And look at it this way. The cheese sauce is not going to be as sharp as the cheese itself because you're tempering it back with all that cream. Okay? So don't be afraid of this. Now look how easily and quickly that's melting. I'm going to lower my temperature just a little bit so it doesn't get too hot on me. I'm getting good melting. My cheese sauce is changing color. And it's important for me to note here, don't dump all of your cheese in at once. Take your time with how you mix it in. All right, it will melt into the cream a lot easier this way. Our cheese sauce is made. See how nothing's coming out on my whisk? Look how fast I made that. Now that I have this finished, I'm gonna take my flame and turn it off for this burner. That lid, put it on there. The lid is important, folks. That's what keeps the cheese sauce from skinning over. We don't want that. I bet, looky there.
<laughs> Watch out with that salt, about a half a teaspoon. When pouring in your mac, again, don't dump it all in. You're wanting the noodles to be well coated in water, not just piled on the bottom. And uh, there we go, all done. If you notice, I didn't put any oil in that water, ladies and gentlemen, that does nothing. If you'll look back there right now, do you see pasta sitting on top of the water? No, the pasta's under the water. If I put oil in it, the oil will stay on top of the water. The oil won't change anything. It won't do anything for me. It doesn't coat the pasta when I pour it out because the oil is the first thing that comes pouring out of there due to the fact that it's on top. And as a result, it does nothing. You've simply wasted cooking oil. If you're gonna use oil on pasta, you do that after it's cooked. And in the case of this dish, we're not gonna do it because we're gonna use our pasta to absorb water. Now I've put my pasta in there. I started this a few minutes uh, or a few seconds late, but this is my count up timer. And I pay attention to these because it tells me how long something's been cooking and lets me know when to check it. I want to check this in about five minutes. I want this stuff to be like seriously al dente. All right, this is just now coming past five and a half. I checked my noodles just a moment ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are perfect now. They are another minute and a half and it'll be a perfect al dente. So it's just a little bit too firm and that's where I want it. And turn off my flame. I'm going to take my strainer and I'm going to strain this off. Okay, so we have our cheese sauce, we have our mac, mac into the cheese. It just doesn't get a whole lot easier, does it? Now I'm going to stir this and I'm going to add a couple of items. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little salt in there, not much. Oh, maybe a half a teaspoon at the very most, okay? A very tiny amount of that MSG, okay? No more than a quarter of a teaspoon, just a very light dusting. It doesn't take a whole lot. It's really interesting. But what it does for food is quite incredible. So this, the cheesiness of this just doubled with that one little sprinkle, okay? So we can see it's way too liquidy. See there, this is just a, a soupy mess right now. But you watch, in 15 minutes, that'll change. So I'm gonna change this from count up to count down. 15 minutes on a countdown. And what I'm gonna do is every five minutes, I'm gonna come in and stir this and that way, the liquid cheese on the bottom is going to get stirred up into the top and these macaroni noodles are going to finish absorbing that excess moisture. So my timer has just beeped and telling me that this right here is ready to stir. So that's what we're going to do. Let's take a look. Now looky there, it's already changing into consistency. Isn't that neat? It's getting there real quick. So five minutes in, we're already looking a little bit thicker. And look, the sauce is sticking better to this silicone spatula. See what happens. Now the quantity of everything that I have used today, not a difficult thing, ladies and gentlemen. It starts with one and a half cups of heavy cream. And to that we used eight ounces of shredded extra sharp cheddar cheese. To that I used eight ounces of macaroni. You can use different kinds of macaroni, larger or different shapes if you wish. They all work just fine. Keep it around eight ounces. The salt I used in that about a quarter, sometimes up to a half a teaspoon at the most. And on the MSG, no more than a quarter of a teaspoon. Remember MSG doesn't change the flavor of the food. It only changes how your tongue perceives that flavor. Alrighty, my timer has just beeped again. It is now showing five minutes. Five minutes, like I said, every five minutes we stir it. So let's take a look at it now. And yet, even thicker. 
even richer, even creamier than it was before. So as you can see, we have something incredible coming along right here. So I give it the last five minutes and look at the difference again, how the cheese coats that spatula. It tells a story. My timer just finished timing down. That's been 15 minutes for our macaroni and cheese. So now let's take a look at what we have for a final product. This is what I'm talking about right here. It looks a whole lot different than it did before. All right, I'm gonna get some in my bowl. One thing's for sure, I love me some macaroni and cheese. There we are. So I'm gonna sit and enjoy my mac and cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, I certainly hope you enjoy yours. This is a treat. Well, I'm sure you're gonna love the way I do it. So there's what it looks like, folks. We've done a beautiful job of making this macaroni and cheese. You're gonna love it. So is everyone you know. Well, it's all for the enjoying. Mm. First of all, <laughs> like I said, mouthfeel. That noodle needs to be firm, but not too al dente. And it's there now, it's perfect. The noodle has a, a nice feel to it. The sauce coats the mouth perfectly. The tongue, the roof of my mouth. Mm. Mm. And the cheese explodes flavor everywhere. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy it. It's worth your time. Mm. Let me say this. Folks, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry. I love this when I get started. Mm. Thank you for watching. Please take a look at my other videos. Take a look in that description box down below. The links that are there. Drop me some comments. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this and please pay attention to what's coming because there's a lot more good dishes just like this right here on Texas Cooking Today. You folks have a good day. I will. <laughs>